Thank you, boys, for having me. I appreciate it. Um, you know, funny, uh, when everybody heard that I was going to come talk to you guys, everybody said, well, what are you going to say? I said, well, I don't know what I'm going to say. I mean, these guys are already successful guys. Like, they're already on top. They're here. They're the Lakers. So then I figured, well, um, really, the two things I want to say are you got to be the hardest workers in the room and don't fuck the opportunity up. The truth is, I really didn't know what I was going to say because you guys, you, you guys are at the top, right? You made it, like you're here, right? Um, so I thought what I'd do, instead of, instead of telling you what I think you should be doing or what, how you could be better, or I thought, well, let me just speak from the heart, speak from my gut, and really not have anything prepared, but just tell you what's worked for me. And maybe some of the stuff that's worked for me might work for you now, currently, presently, as you guys have your goals and ambitions, NBA championship, MVPs in this room, things like that. But then further on down the line, as you guys continue to live your life. The first thing I just want to say is this idea and this notion that you can be anything you want and you can accomplish anything you want, right? We hear that. You've heard that from the time you were little boys. You hear that now. You're already incredibly accomplished. You can win an NBA championship, MVP of the league. You could become president. You could become governor. You can have, you could be in, 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 in um, you could be in entertainment. You could do Charles and you could do Shaq, you could do that. You could do whatever you want to do. You guys know that. The thing that has worked for me is to remember the hard times. So, and I'm sure you guys all have your processes. And again, I'm going to tell you what's worked for me. So before a big movie comes out, before, back in the days when I was wrestling with WWE, a WrestleMania match, anything big that would happen, I would always take a moment and I'd just remind myself, all right, I was evicted when I was 14. We were kicked off the island. We couldn't live in Hawaii. Had no place to live. Uh, a lot of shit happened then when I moved to Nashville. I was arrested multiple times by the time I was 16 years old. Like, I remember that. Um, if I were playing on this team, uh, which my, you know, my skills are, um, what's that term? Oh, the shits. So I don't ever play. But before I lace up, before I get on court, before I play in these big games, before I go to the Staples Center, where history is there, those are, those are historic walls there at the Staples Center. Uh, I would remember that. And it allows me then to be present in the moment and understand, holy shit, this, the stuff I have around me right now, this is the shit that I dreamed of when I was a kid. I am here. And I played for University of Miami. Played with great teams. Warren Sapp, Ray Lewis, they were my teammates. They were balling. Warren Sapp was playing tight end that time. I was starting defensive tackle. Yeah. They moved him over to D-line. And he looked at me, he's like, yo, dude, I'm gonna take your spot. I said, you ain't taking my fucking spot. He said, I'm gonna take your spot. I said, no, you ain't. We battled and he took my spot. <laughs> now you can imagine how that fucked with me because there goes my opportunity. He went in, switched the defensive tackle, lit the world on fire. Well, what that did, it crushed me and it crushed my dreams. I had a piss poor senior year, zero production, no NFL, no combine invite, nothing. Finally went to the CFL, Calgary Stampeders, making $250 a week Canadian. Canadian, now I had to send that shit home to my, uh, to my wife at that time. I had no money, so I remember that. When I got cut from Canada, I had seven bucks in my pocket. And I always tell that story. So now my production company is seven bucks, advertising agency is seven bucks, everything is seven bucks. So I always remember that. What helps me is to keep the hard times in the front of my mind, because it allows me to go into these big moments that I've worked my ass off, and you guys have worked your ass off. It allows me to go into these big moments with a different perspective. What it also does for me, and again, this, just, this is what works for me, like, <clears throat> I keep my back, excuse my language, my back is up against this motherfucker. Every day, it's against this fucking wall. Excuse my language. But it's up against this motherfucker because it's what I believe in. And when my back is against this motherfucker, then there's nowhere to go. But that way, that's it. So, I feel like this could be something 
an ideology and mindset that could help you, could, if you look at it that way. Because you made it already. We made it. We're successful boys and we're lucky boys to be where we're at. Oh, you guys made it. Everybody's rich in the room. Nobody's gonna get evicted anymore. Anything you got, there's no more money problems, right? You got a lot of hands out now. Hey, can I get a little bit? Can I get a little bit? Right, that happens. <clears throat> but when you make it, uh, for me, I need this. I need this. So every day, my back is up against this motherfucker, and this is how I operate. Now, doesn't mean you don't smile, doesn't mean you don't laugh and joke, quote, right? You're happy, I'm happy, I'm a happy guy. But when it comes to business, and when it comes to executing, it's up against this. And I gotta go that way. And I don't give a fuck who is in front of me. They're not gonna stop me.